in our last tutorial, we got to this point in the code here. And what we had just done was we created a raster data set that was a rasterization of our training shapefile. Now we didn't save this. This was just created in memory, so we had to save this to an Apple file. And we're not going to save it to an Apple file because all we want to do is get the two-dimensional array that represents this. And then from that two-dimensional array, we're going to get the information of the image segments that corresponds to our truth data. And so that's what we're going to go ahead and do here in this video. We're going to start working through this, and we'll see how far we get. We're getting close to the end here where we can start doing some classification with random forests. So thanks for sticking with me, with me this long, and we're going to keep going here. And in the next couple of videos, we're going to get through um, these tutorials. All right, so we're going to make a variable now, and we'll call this ground truth. So this is going to be our truth data that we're going to use to train our model. Um, and actually, we'll just call this, well, well, we'll call it ground truth. We'll call it ground truth. We're going to make some more variables later. So we'll call this ground truth to start. And to get this, we want to get the information from this rasterized layer. And the name of this rasterized layer is target DS. So we're going to say target DS dot get raster band one dot read as array and that's going to read that as a two-dimensional array into whoops excuse me our ground truth variable here okay so now you want to get the values for each class which are basically um, those segment values um actually sorry these are the class values so we want to do class classes because class is a keyword we want to get the unique values from ground truth. So we np numpy dot unique ground truth. And we don't want the value of zero. Okay. So that means anything um, greater than one, one or greater, we're going to keep. And we'll just check to make sure this works by doing print. And we'll do class values, classes. Okay, so what this is doing is we're getting the unique values and we're taking all but the first value. Now our no data value in this case is going to be zero and this assumes that our first value in the raster is no data, which in this case it is. Um, if that's not the case, you're gonna have to sort this um, and then take everything but the first value but that's where we're going to print this out. So we'll print this out, and if our class values turn out correct, we're good to go. Um, otherwise, we can make adjustments. And if you're confused about what I'm talking about with these class numbers, let's go take a look at the files we created. So we created a class lookup and a class map here. I think class lookup is what we want to, the one we created, and the class map is one I created in practice. So let's look at our class lookup. This is going to be a CSV file, and it tells us the label and the ID. And so the class we're getting here, we're getting this ID number from each of these labels. Okay, and so this is how we can get back to that, is we have an ID number that goes with each label. So in our final classification, we know how those link up. Oops, let's go back over to our Python IDE here. All right, so what we want to do now is we want to find out which segments belong to which class. So let's make a new variable. We'll call it segments per class. And this is going to be a dictionary. So we'll look up oops, curly braces so we can look up which segments are in which class. And we're going to do for class with the K because class with the C is a keyword in classes. So we're going to loop through everything in this array here, okay? And we're going to find out which segments belong to each one of these classes. So we're gonna make the variable segments of class, and this is going to be a subset of segments, okay? 
And it's going to be segments where ground truth, now remember ground truth is the exact same size um, of, as segments, it's a 2D array, equals class. So let's go back and look up what segments is here so I can tell you what this is doing. So let's go find where we create our segments. Okay, we have our segments data set. Should be, okay, so here we are. Here's our segments. This is from our slick image segmentation right here. That's our segments variable. And once we come down here, so this is a 2D array that has an identification number for the segmentation or the segment ID number, okay? So let's come back down to the bottom. Ground truth is a 2D array that contains a number zero through seven. Zero means there's no training data there. One through seven indicates which type of land cover it is. Okay. And so class is a number one through seven that represents a land cover type. So we're saying where a segment is and where the ground truth equals our class value, we're going to keep those segments. And so this tells us which segments correspond to which class or which land cover type. Okay, so once we have this, we now want to add these segments into our dictionary. In this case, it's actually a set. It's gonna be a set, a set of sets, so that we can look it up later, okay? So we wanna go segments per class equals, oh, and we need to go class. We wanna segments per class for this class is going to equal set segments of class, okay? And so this is gonna be a set which makes it easy to look up which segments for a land cover type um, represent it, okay? So if we do segments per class one, that will give us the segments that are classified as a road and we'll return the numbers of those segments is what we would get, all right? And just to show you what this looks like, we're gonna do a little print statement here to, uh, to show how many segments we have that are represented in our training data. So the way we'll do that is we'll go print training segments for class, class, put a colon in there, and then we'll do len segments, oops, segments of class. And that will tell us how many training segments we have um, for each of those classes. Now we're not gonna print this out yet because we're gonna have to run through this whole script to do it. And what this is gonna give us when we're done is a single script that runs through this entire process. As I mentioned in the last video, it's probably a wise idea to clean this up a little bit, break it down into functions and maybe some separate scripts. And we may do that um, depending on time with these tutorials. So now what we need to do is we need to check and make sure that a segment does not appear in multiple classes. Because if we have um, a segment classified as two different things, we cannot use that as a training data set. So we're gonna make two new sets here. We're gonna make an intersection set, so it's gonna equal an empty set. And we're going to make an accumulation set, I'm gonna call it a cum, and it's also going to equal an empty set. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna loop through our segments per class set, and for each class, we're going to make sure that no segments appear in more than one class. So let's do for class segments, oops, in segments per class dot values, just like that, we're going to do intersection and we'll do or equals. Okay, so this is gonna add this is like plus equals. This means if it doesn't exist, we're going to add it in basically. And we're going to intersect, we're gonna do a cum 
uh, intersection class segments. So what this is telling us, this is telling us if anything in a cube, and this is why we're using sets because intersection is a method of set. If anything in a cube intersects or overlaps with these class segments, we're going to add it to intersection here. And then we're going to add all these um, class segments to a cube. So this is keeping track of the segments we've already tested. And this is telling us if any of those segments um, have been repeated. Okay, so each class we're going to go through and do this again and again. And what we're hoping for is that at the end, the value of intersection is zero. If it's not zero, that means that we have segments that are, appear for more than one class, and that gives us a problem. So what we want to do here, oops, shift tab, is we want to assert that len intersection is zero. If it does not equal zero, then we need to we'll print out a message um, segment represent multiple classes. Okay, and that will let us know that we have a problem. Okay, and once we've done this, we're ready to start training our classification algorithm. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to click run so we can see this algorithm run all the way through and we'll see this print out the training segments for a class um, and the number of those segments and we will see if our assertion comes out properly. If this assertion um, gets passed up, we shouldn't see any message get printed out and the script should finish running properly. So I'm going to click run, then I'll stop the video while it runs because that'll take a few minutes um, and then I'll come back at the end so we can look at the output. So I'm gonna go ahead now and I'm going to change this to OBIA and I'm going to click run and we'll make sure this starts properly um, and then I can pause it once we make sure we're underway. Okay, and so it looks like we're not gonna get a message until the segments are complete, which will take a minute or two. And so we should be up and running and I'll check back in with you as we get going here. Okay, so the image was read in properly and the segmentation, we're now at this part of the, this part of the segmentation is happening and you can see that the segmentation was completed, and now we are getting the pixel, um, I guess, are we getting the uh, segment information, the segment spectral information, um, and it's working on that now, which will take a little time. All right, so the script finished running. You can see that we created 48,000 objects, just over 48,000. And we printed out our class values, which is what we printed out right here if we got our classes. So we have class values one through seven, which if we look back at our CSV file, that's exactly what we should have, one through seven. And then we printed out the number of training segments we have for each class. So we have 24, 31, 32, 28, 44, 40, and 26. Okay, so in real life, we might want to have more training segments than that for each class, but this will do for our example here. And as you can see, we did not have this message, which means our assertion didn't pop, which means that there was no overlap between segments for each class, and so we're good to go. All right, so now in our next video tutorial, we're going to pick up here, and we're going to start training our algorithm and we might even get all the way through applying that trained algorithm to the image to create the classifications. Thanks for watching. Um, check out opensourceoptions.com. The code for this is uh, in that blog post, and I'll link that blog post in the description of the video. Um, like I said, if you have any questions, 
feel free to ask on the YouTube channel in the comments. I will try to get to them. I don't always get to all the questions and comments, but I do try. Um, and if you see those comments there, you have an answer, please go ahead and chime in and answer. Thanks for watching.